Hello, Southeastern MBA students. This is Professor Stuckey. Since many of you had problems last week getting through your homework, I decided to do a demonstration video this week to try to help you get through the assignments a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is go through the problems in your textbook, um, in the actual course text itself, and try to explain some of the steps as far as how to do it and why you are doing it that way to try to help you get through your homework a little bit easier this week. So your first step to do the assignment is to open your uh, file. In this case, we are starting with the products mix one file and go ahead and open that. If you are trying to follow along in your text, I am on page 76 and 77. Go ahead and waiting for my Excel to open. All right. If you need a little bit of extra time as we go through any of the steps, go ahead and pause the recording because the steps do build off of one uh, one another. So if you don't have the step you're working on right, you won't be able to go ahead and go on to the next step. So the very first thing that we're going to do is enable editing on the assignment. You won't be able to get to any of your formulas until you do that. Um, your book has you name your ranges. And so I'm going to show you how to do that in case you don't know. And also I'm going to go ahead and do it so that it's a little bit easier to follow along with what is in the text. So to name the easiest way to name your ranges is it's on your formula tab and then we are going to select the ranges to name. So we're going to do your maximum sales. So select A18 to C18 to, to do those. Your number to produce, which is B16 and C16. Actually, it, you select A16 all the way to C16. And the total profit. No, we don't do... Actually, we can't do the total profit in with the others because we are going to do this create from selection. And in order to use the create from selection, they all have to be the same shape. So I'm going to create from selection and we're going to tell it to create names at the left column and push OK. The next thing we're going to grab is the hours used, which is B20 through B22, and the hours available, which is D20 through D22. And again, go ahead and create from selection. This time, make sure that it says to create the names from the values in the top row, and press OK. The final one that we're going to grab is total profit and it just says total here but we'll go ahead and select D24 and D25 create selection and again the create name should be in the top row. Now we're going to go ahead and copy and paste our names in cell E2. To do that you go to use in formula, paste names, and you tell it to paste the whole list. Now our range names match what is in the assignment. So there you go. If you do this, it'll make it a little easier to follow along with the formulas in the text. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is calculate the unit margin for the basic and the XP model of the computer. So first thing we do when we do a formula is we start the formula with an equals. You will always start your formulas with an equal sign. The next thing that we're going to do is select B11. That is the selling price of the unit. Um, we're going to then subtract the the um, labor hours used for assembling okay, times the cost of those labor hours. So we start with what we can actually sell it for, which is B11, and then now we have to subtract all of the costs. 
All right, cell B3 has to be an absolute cell value. Here's the difference between a relative cell value and an absolute cell value. A relative cell value will move as you copy and paste the formula. So B8 is a relative cell value. When we copy the, the formula we're putting in cell B12 to cell C12, then the, um, then B8 will no longer refer to B8, it will refer to C8 when we copy and paste that formula. However, um, in the case of the cost per labor hours of assembling, we do not want um, cell B3 to shift over to C3 when we copy and paste the formula here. So we make it an absolute cell reference. You do that by putting dollar signs in front of both the column and the row. You can also push F4 and it will do both at the same time. There are going to be some places later on where either the column will be an absolute cell reference but not the row. In other words, we'll ne the, the column won't be able to shift as the, co as the formula is copied and pasted but the row will or the other way around where the row will be an absolute value and not able to shift no matter where you copy and paste the formula but the column um, will be able to shift. In this case, both of them are an absolute value, so this cell reference will never change no matter where you copy and paste this formula onto the spreadsheet. Okay, so we have the selling price, and so far we've subtracted the cost for assembly, which we've calculated by See, by multiplying the cost or the number of hours for assembly times the cost for assembly, the next thing we are going to do is subtract the labor hours for testing times the cost per labor hour of testing. And again, we make that cost an absolute value so that no matter where we copy and paste the cell on the spreadsheet, it will always refer back to that cell. Okay. Finally, we are going to subtract the cost of the components. Actually, I'm not sure why a comma got under there. I put, hit the wrong button. Okay, so now this formula matches what you see in the unit margins under section three on page 77. Okay, when we hit enter, that gives us a unit margin of $80, and we can now copy and paste this formula over to C12. Now again, notice how these cells that are not absolute values shifted when we copied and pasted the formula, but these cells that were absolute values still referred to the same cell in both formulas. Right. Okay, the primary point of building this model is to determine how many of the basic model to produce and how many of the XP model produced given the constraints in the problem. So we're going to go ahead and highlight these two cells, which is B16 and C16, because they are our decision cells. We're not going to put any numbers in them because we're going to use solver to determine what the values in these, what, what is the optimal value for these two cells. So you can pick any color you like, go ahead and highlight these cells so that you remember to use them or that they are your decision variables in this problem. Next, we are going to calculate the number of hours available for assembly. We are going to do that in cell B21 and in, to do that, we are going to put in another formula. Remember, always start your formulas with an equal, and we are going to use a sum product formula. Okay. So you enter sum product and put in parentheses. Now, there are two arrays that we want the sum product of, and that is B8 and C8 is your first array. So go ahead and select that and then put a comma. Your next array is the number to produce, and because we've named that range, you can see that it pops up and I just click on it. Now let me take a minute to explain what the sum product function actually does. It takes the range, and the ranges have to be the same size and shape, and it multiplies the number, each, um, corresponding cell and then 
adds it to the multiplication of the next corresponding cell. So what that practically looks like is it takes cell B8 and multiplies it by cell B16. Then it, um, and then it does plus cell C8 times cell C16. In this case, it's only two. It could go on longer than that. Okay. So we are going to put the, um, go ahead and hit enter there. The next one that we're going to do is the hours available for assembling. And we use another sum product for that. And the two arrays that we're going to use this time are the um, B9 to C9, and then again, the number to produce. Close it with parentheses and press enter. Notice that my hours are zero right now, and that is because my number to produce is sitting at zero. I haven't run solver yet. If we want to make this, simulation match figure 3.2 in your text, we can enter the seam number to produce that they have, which is 600, 600 for basic and 1200 for XP. And now our hours used and have hours available match 3.2. Now notice they exceed the constraints on the number of hours available for assembling. So this, so the 600 and 1200 is not a feasible solution. All right, let's move on and calculate our net profit, okay? So to calculate the profit for the basic models, we are going to enter the formula B12 times B16. And what that does is it multiplies the unit margin for each times the number that we plan to produce. We copy and paste that over to XP and then we can sum those two cells to get the total. Okay. Now it's time to run solver. My solver is already installed, but I'm going to show you how to install it in case it's not already on your computer. Go to your file tab and go to options. Go to add-ins. And where it says Manage Excel Add-ins at the bottom, hit the Go button that's right beside that. And if your Solver Add-in box isn't checked, go ahead and check it. And I'm going to uncheck my Solver table for now and show you how to install it again in, in the next lesson. All right. Now, your solver is under your data ribbon. You should see it under analysis and solver. So go ahead and click solver. And our objective here is to maximize our profit. So our objective cell is cell D25, and we are going to maximize that value. Remember when I talked about decision cells? We're going to do that by changing the variable cells. And the variable cells are our decision cells, which are these two highlighted in blue, which is B16 and C16. So go ahead and select those. And now we have to put in our constraints. So to, you go down here and add in your constraints. And the first constraint is that the hours that are used have to be less than or equal, and you set that in this middle section, to hours available. Okay. And then we want to add one more. And that is the number to produce has to be less than or equal to the maximum sales because it does no good to produce items that you can't actually sell. So now go ahead and press OK. And we are going to go ahead and solve this thing. Okay. Now, if I move this box to the side, you can see that you are going to produce, our solver recommends you to producing 560 basic 
models and 1200 XP models. All right, that's all for this one and I will do some more for you later on this week. Thanks.